Welcome back to the channel. Well, I am down at Barnstormer BMW in Alton and they very kindly let me loose on the brand new R1300 GS. I mean, just looking at this bike, it's so radically different from the old one, but still quite obviously a GS. I really like the styling of this machine, but what I really want to know is how does this bike ride? So many changes to this bike. It's, I think, about 18 kilos lighter than the old machine, so massive reduction in weight, more power, it's now 1300 cc from that Boxer engine, more power and more torque, and lightweight, I mean, updated suspension, loads of updated technology, now has radar, but how does it ride? So join me for a little spin around the countryside and I will let you know, but I'm uh, quite excited about this one. Jopsy, roll the intro. We will stop as part of this video and do like a full walk around of this machine where we point out some of the, the details etc. But looking at the bike, I mean it looks amazing. This is the triple black version and it's a TE. So the TE comes with the electronic suspension and it also comes with the electrically operated screen and there's some other bits and bobs on the TE. This doesn't have the dynamic ride height control, that's an extra. That's an extra, factory extra. And this bike also has the rider assistant, I think it's called, which is also a factory option. So this has got the rider assistant. So we'll see what that does. I'm, I'll be talking about that in a minute because I'm not overly sure I'm gonna like the idea of that rider assistant, but there we go. You've got new switch gear, you know, new sort of shortcuts with the switch gear. I've just had a little introduction to it all. So turning it on, you've got that, you know, very, familiar screen it, it looks almost identical to screen doesn't it oh, and they're firing it into life sounds very familiar so far jumping aboard it does feel like a much more compact machine than the old model i would say the seat feels nice and low there's you know various seat heights on this bike including like really low seat heights and if you if you are a bit vertically challenged you know you can get the add on where the suspension uh, dynamically drops the suspension as the bike goes slower but i'm been six foot two i've got no problems with height the old gs was a fantastic machine there's no denying the old gs was a great bike absolutely brilliant one of the few criticisms with that bike was the gearbox the gearbox was always quite clunky and the quick shifter you know didn't work that great it was for once you were used to the bike and you knew how it liked to be ridden, you know, quite a slow, take your time changing gear, it was fine. But it was never that sporty, it was never a fast changing box. And probably the biggest, biggest gripe with the old GS. This one, the gearbox is now actually under the engine as opposed to behind the engine. You've now got a beautiful gearbox. I mean, that was, as I say, that was the biggest criticism with this old Boxer engine, was that gearbox. It looks like that's now sorted. The brakes feel nice. You've got an updated telelever system up front now. So you always had telelever on the GS. Well, now they've got this, I think it's para telelever suspension. So the suspension has been reworked and updated, but you've still got that you know, it doesn't dive because it's telling so you go on the brakes, the front end doesn't dive. It just always takes a little bit of getting used to. Yeah, I've got to be a little bit careful because we've got brand new tyres, wet roads, and 10 degrees. So I'm not going to be really be able to chuck this around too much. But you know, even immediately you can tell it still has that instant direction change. You know, the GS was renowned for because that weight's low. Oh, it's got loads of grunt, loads of grunt. But yeah, it's just it's just effortless the way it changes direction, and it definitely does feel lighter. I think it's about 15 kilos lighter than the old one, something like that. And you can tell it does feel light. It feels agile. You know, if you're not going off road, you know weight isn't 
too much of a problem with, a, with an adventure bike, is it? The only time it becomes apparent, I mean, once the old bike was rolling, it didn't feel heavy when it was rolling, because that centre of gravity was so low. But it's when you want to go off-road, it's when you're just manoeuvring the bike around in the garage. It's sort of when you notice that weight. So we will do a little bit of a push around of this in a minute, but I can tell, even riding it, that it's a, it's a lighter machine. Front brakes are nice. The brakes are now Brembo again on the BMW, so they've moved away from the Hayes brakes and we're now Brembo once more. But yeah, it's got loads of drive, loads of bottom end pull. You know, it's a little bit more than the old bike. I think it's 149 newton meters. The old bike is about 140, so you've got a little bit more torque. The suspension ride is beautiful. I mean, this is just in road mode at the moment. The ride is absolutely lovely. You're getting wafted along. Bloody hell, the wheel was up there. <laughs> so much grunt that pulled the wheel up in third gear over a little crest. This is <laughs> wow. Don't tell me the GS has now become a wheelie machine. <laughs> I'll be buying one at this rate. The TE, which is what this is, which has electronic suspension, you know, electric screen, all of that business, and so all of the the main extras, you know, the quick shifter and the blipper is 18.4 or something like that. So 18 and a half, let's call it, which I don't think is too bad. And then the base version, I think, is 16, which doesn't have electronic suspension. You know, it doesn't have a quick shifter blipper, you know. So yeah, the pricing is in line with the old bike, which I think is absolutely brilliant. They haven't just hiked up the prices. It seems to be a roughly the same price as the old machine. Uh, horses aren't overly keen on motorcycles, are they? That's <laughs> OK, no problem. It's really nice, I have to say. This is really nice. I'll get it up to a bit higher speed stuff in a minute and we'll see what the screen height's like and any turbulence on the screen. You've also got these sort of big spaniel ears at the front here, which are sort of invisible when you're just looking at the bike. You don't really see them because they're clear, but you can see they're really got the ability to deflect a lot of air from the rider. The ergonomics are nice, similar sort of position to the old bike. Almost, you're quite upright on the back, you've got a lot of weight on your bum, your feet are sort of in line with your hips, you're not you're not sat like you're sat at a kitchen table, it's sort of a bit of a sporty position where, where, where your feet are, you know, and the bars are really wide and high, yeah, it's, it's really comfortable. The riding position feels very much like the old machine, which I did love the riding position on the old bike. So much drive there, unbelievable. Loads of steering up, look at that. Absolutely bags of steering up. Let's put it in dynamic mode. Oh, straight away actually, I could tell the suspension is a little bit firmer now in this dynamic. Definitely a bit more firmness to it. You can't see how much it'll dive because it won't dive. Cruise control on, set, there we go. It increase, you've got the same little buttons for the cruise controls on the older bike. Can you change gear with the cruise? Yeah, you can change gear with the cruiser. Let's take it up to 60. Sit behind the car in front, and you can adjust how close you want the bike to sit on the car in front. Probably with this, is it? No, that's, that's the windscreen. Look at that. Quite a, you know, a, a large range of movement with that windscreen. And I'm six foot two, and that screen feels a really nice height for me, actually. I'm not getting any buffeting, I'm only doing 50 miles an hour, admittedly. I can't, I, I can't shut my, my bloody script visor because my glasses are steaming up. So there's like a shortcut button now on the dashboard, and that'll take, I can, if I hold it down, it's been set to do the heated seat and heated grips. So you can, uh, let's put them on three. Yeah, so you've got a shortcut, so you don't have to scroll around all the menus. Now people are braking in front, the bike, it's slowing down. Yeah, adaptive cruise is very, very good. I do love adaptive cruise control. You set your favourites now on this menu. You still got the jog wheel to do stuff. Oh, there we go. That, that's how I adjust. That's how I adjust my distance. Look, so one blob will mean it will sit up his ass like an Audi driver. Three blobs, it will drop back. 
But I mean, we've all seen adaptive cruise control by now. This is exactly the same system, which is on the RT. Works very well. Hey, we've got the Sport Dash. I do like the Sport Dash with Berlin angles. God, look at the, the, the way it pulls. I was fourth gear, just going aggressively on the gas. It's got a lot of grunt, this engine. It always was a grunty bike, but I mean, that'll just make overtaking so easy now. Yeah, bags and bags of overtaking grunt there. Well, I've picked a right old foggy day, haven't I? I've got my visor open because the, <laughs> the glasses are steaming up. Why did I not wear my contact lenses? Blind spot detection alert with that. Nice and bright as well. So in essence, the engine, the feel of the bike, the noise, you know, the vibrations, feels just like the old machine. Exactly like the old machine. What you notice is improved. The whole thing feels a bit more agile. Definitely changes direction a little bit quicker. It feels a little bit lower, the bike. You know, obviously there's different seat heights. I'd probably get a slightly higher seat than this if I was specking one of these. Now, I love the electrically operated screen. I think that's brilliant. I'm really liking the, the weather protection with that screen. And I'm getting, I'm getting zero buffeting. Zero buffeting. I mean, that's sick. I will take it up to 70 in a minute. But I'm not getting any buffeting on my helmet, which is a real surprise. Well, I have to say, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. The GS has definitely taken a step. It's, it looks quite different, but it's not radically different. And why would they, you know, why, why would BMW risk going radically different with this machine? It, it feels like a big update, feels like the old bike. It, it seems to have everything the old bike had, which made it great. Plus, you've got more tech. I think you've got a better look. It's a bit sleeker looking, but you know, that that's, you know, looks as in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? But with that improved gearbox, it makes a massive difference because that was always the letdown for me of the GS, that big clunky gearbox. That is now, it's a lot less clunky. There's still quite a firm, a firmness to the shift. You've got to give it a quite a positive shift, but it's a, it's a much nicer feeling gearbox. Now sit around a little bit. Oh, that's that's bright. That's bright. So there she is, the new BMW R1300 GS. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Indicators in the handguards, and they're really bright. So there we are. It's a little bit dirtier than what it was when we set off, but oh well. This is what happens when you go out and ride in October. So this bike doesn't have the spoked wheels. The spoked wheels are an option from the factory. I think it's an extra 50 pounds for the spoked wheel. The gold rimmed spoked wheels, I'll definitely get those. Gold wheels, black bike, that would look really good. In here we have that new tele-lever suspension and there's a steering damper up under there as well. Radiators up high, you know, so they're not getting all that shit blasted at them. They're up out the way which is most of the new adventure bikes are set like that now, aren't they? We've got BMW branded calipers, but these are actually Brembo calipers. And I think if you look on the inside of the caliper, it says Brembo on the inside. But you know, the, the haze brakes felt great. I th so maybe there's a little bit less bite with these calipers. The old, the old haze brakes used to have a real lot of initial bite, didn't they? Maybe a little bit less bite with these. One of the big talking points with the new bike is this new headlight assembly. I actually think it looks really good. It looks really funky with the... Oh, screen's decided it's going to come down. I think it looks really funky with these sort of four LEDs on the outside and then a central sort of projector. And of course, you can have the extra adaptive headlight which turns and stuff. I don't think this bike's got that. But I, I, like, I like what they've done with the headlight. I think it looks good. I think the whole front end looks good. And this is obviously the radar module, so you could always have a flat surface for the radar module. But I think they've integrated that pretty well into the machine now. It doesn't stand out as being obvious, you know, it's for the radar. The rear of the bike, obviously you've got the rear radar here as well. Doesn't look too bad. Better looking than the 
the Triumph rear radar, which looks like a baboon's backside. The weight saving, they saved, I think, two and a half kilos or something from the engine. They've also changed the whole rear subframe is much lighter. They're using what they're calling this sheet steel. I think they call it. Sounds terrible. I mean, the sheet steel sounds like someone's knocked it up in their garage, doesn't it? But it's like a you know, pressed steel um, subframe. It could be aluminium, but, you know, it's, it's a lot lighter is the basic point. And the luggage has this now. It's got an optional central locking. So there's actually electrical connectors under this cap for the luggage. I think if we take that off. Yeah, there you go. You've got electrical connectors to your luggage. So yeah, I don't know no, I don't know if I like the idea of central locking on your panniers. As long as you can override it with a key, perfect. But I don't like, you know, if it just works electronically to unlock them, I think that could be a disaster waiting to happen when you go on your tour. Looks are subjective, but I actually think this new version's really growing on me. And it sometimes takes a little bit of time to, to, for that to happen, doesn't it? And I think already I'm really liking the look of this new bike. So I think over time this is just going to become, I think the old one's going to perhaps start looking really dated when people start to adjust and get used to this new version. But very nice. I am liking this a lot. Let's just talk through some of the specs of this machine because there's so much tech on this I, I can't possibly remember it all. So this weighs 237 kilos, which is 12 kilograms lighter than the old machine. The old machine was 136 horsepower, this is 145. The old machine had 143 newton meters of torque, this has got 149. So standard on this bike, you get the ABS Pro, you get the hill start control, you get the dynamic brake control, dynamic cruise control, the tyre pressure sensors, the heated grips and the phone charging. So you get all of that standard on for the £16,000 bike, which I think is pretty good, isn't it? Optionally, you can get the electric suspension. That's the height adjustable suspension. Remember, the TE comes with electric suspension anyway, but the optional where it reduces its height as you stop. That's an extra adaptive headlight control, so it looks around corners. Uh, the heated seats, obviously extra. Uh, the riding assistant, which I touched on. Not sure I'd want that. Forged wheels are extra, and the central locking is extra for the pannier. So I wouldn't bother with the central locking either. I'd just use my key. What's wrong with the plain old-fashioned key? Look, saying about their little cubby, there's a big cubby here. And I wonder if you can char... Oh, there's a USB at the bottom there. It's a shame it's not wire. It doesn't seem to be wireless charging, which is a shame. But even my massive S23 Ultra fits in there. It will take a big one. So 70 miles an hour, very comfortable. No buffeting of the helmet. Beautiful for 70 miles an hour, that is. I have to open my visor though, because I'm steaming up. I mean, I think that screen has also returned, even though it went down when I turned the bike off, it's gone back up again to in the position I last had it in. So it looks like the screen remembers what position it was in, even though it drops down when you turn the bike off. That's quite cool, isn't it? Clever tech. I'm all for clever tech. BMWGS. It's that what surprises me. It's, <laughs> it's that low down grunt. And we all, we all know bikes with low down grunt just make great road bikes. The 2000 revs in third gear. I mean, it absolute, it's absolutely rampages off. It is, uh, yeah, that, that new motor is beautiful. It's still got all the shift cam stuff, you know, but it's just basically an increase in capacity and a new gearbox. It's the, the, old, the whole engine's probably been completely overhauled. I'm simplifying, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a definite improvement on the old bike. And then of course, this engine will filter down to like the RS model, the other R models in the range. And that motor in the little sporty RS or the naked R, that's going to be great, isn't it? Especially with that weight reduction as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing this motor get into the other models. It's quite noisy, the engine. You know, there's a bit of rattles. And there was some sort of, you know, it's, it doesn't it doesn't sound silky smooth there's some sort of noises from the engine but it always was you know character let's call it character 
quite characterful. Woo, it's quick! <laughs> it's really quick! Normally on the GS, you've got loads of bottom end, but then it sort of like just revs. It doesn't, there's no point revving it because it's got nothing at the top. This has definitely got a kick at the top. So you've got a bit of extra punch at the top, which makes it worth revving. Yeah, that's, that's pretty quick. I think that weight reduction, that extra power and torque, it's now made this a pretty quick bike. It still feels very much like a GS. I don't think BMW are stray too far away from that winning formula. I mean, I mean why would they? You know, why would they? It's, it's the best-selling adventure bike on the market. So they stayed, they stayed very close to it. It's definitely got a very similar feel to the old bike. If you like the old bike, you're going to love this bike because it's just better, more electronics, more toys, and what is much better is the gearbox. More power, you know, everything's better. I mean, it's no, it's no Multistrada. It's, it's not the sportiest of adventure bikes. But it never was. It was never about being super sporty. The GS is about banging out miles comfortably. I mean, it, it doesn't excel. It's not the top of the tree, I don't think, in any area. It's not the fastest. It's not the lightest. Well, it almost is now. <laughs> it almost is the lightest. But it's not the fastest. You know, it never was the best off-road. But it could do everything very very well so even though it, it, it wasn't the top of anything apart from maybe comfort it was the most comfortable adventure bike it was always like the next one down you know there was never a bike which overall does everything as well as the gs and that's why it's a bestseller because it doesn't excel at anything but it's very very good at everything and that's what makes a fantastic all-wear motorcycle and uh, this one has only just moved the game on so the competition now has to do even play even more catch up to reach what bmw have managed to achieve with this gs i really like it what i'm going to be doing actually going to be borrowing one shortly from bmw uk and taking it on a long trip i want to see what the comfort's like after doing two three hundred miles in the saddle so i'm going to take this bike out again within the next month or so with bmw uk so if you like the sound of that don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So I've got to say a massive thank you to Barnstormer BMW for letting me loose on their new demo so early on. So I've managed to get this video out nice and early. Actually, before you're going to see some of the videos, probably from the people who've been to the launch of this machine. So massive thanks to Barnstormer. If you want to get yourself and ride this exact machine, give them a call, book yourself in. I don't think you're going to be disappointed with this. This is everything a GS should be with a little bit of sprinkles on top. <laughs> it is fantastic. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.